Trojan family, Trojan family, what's up, man? You, SCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody is getting ready. Get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, I want to talk about some local products and you know, some local players, rather, and guys that I feel like that need to really jump on board with the USC football train. Listen, the buzz is all in the air, and now this thing is really spilling over to the national media, and the national media is recognizing what USC is doing. They just started recognizing it because the first – few days it was like they were a little bit lost in the sauce i kind of listened to a podcast yesterday on 24 7 sports and they kind of addressing it um they seem a little hesitant but they are addressing it but now they're starting to address it and really um uh other outlets are now recognizing what usc is doing and they're talking starting to kind of talk about the coaching a little bit but not so much they're really kind of recognizing the players but you guys already know i feel like it's it's really the coaching that's really coming into play the guys that are surrounding them, the guys that can develop them. And I think as a result, you're starting to see these guys trickle in to the USC football program. But here's the thing. A lot of these guys that we saw over the weekend, or you guys already know it, they're coming from out of state. And, you know, the narrative, let's talk about the narrative that has been um, with USC program as it relates to our local products. And you guys know, let me just go back to guys like um, Aiden Breland or, or guys like, Dakota Fields, you listen to Dakota Fields or you listen to guys like Roger Pleasant. Um, the list can go on and on and on. You got guys like Jericho Johnson, uh, multiple guys that went to other schools. And one of the things you, you hear them talk about, or we can even talk about Pey Peyton Woodyard or even uh, Brandon Baker. Brandon Baker wasn't even giving USC, it seems, it appeared, the time of the day. Um, you, and so you, you look at these big time players that come from USC, that come from um, the local area, St. John Bosco, modern day, and some of the guys that didn't appear to give USC um, the time of the day, whereas you did have some. Of course, you guys know we had some that played at USC, but for the most part, as of late, um, the narrative is that USC doesn't develop. USC is not doing this. Well, the, the, the excuse is officially gone. Um, that excuse of, of USC not being able to develop, it's out of here. USC has the best coaching staff that has been assembled together and everybody should be able to recognize that right now. So in my opinion, um, does that narrative still exist? Absolutely not. Um, so, so how should USC approach this? And on the flip side, how should players approach this now? How should players begin to recognize what USC is doing? Because my thing is this, if you got top players from Georgia, if you got top players from Texas, if you got top players from Florida, from other states, safeties, defensive interior players, positions that make a, a big time difference. If they are recognizing that USC is moving and grooving, why can't the local product? And I'm not saying that they're not, but I'm saying why can't the local players or, or should the local players recognize that? And I think they absolutely should. So, so when you look at some of the guys, and I just pull a couple of them up here, um, and I'm th these are not all of the guys, but I'm just just putting a couple of guys that really, you know, uh, you know, because USC. They already had major, major – let me pause this for a minute. They've already had major, major commitments come in. So we got another June bash coming up, and USC is, all, is almost probably uh, getting ready to get ready to fill this class up in this next – this next, uh, I believe it's May and June, these next big-time visits. And so my thing is this. These local guys, you know, need to kind of jump on board as to what USC is doing. And I consider local guys – I consider the Bishop Gorman, the Las Vegas area. I'm going to just kind of go down – uh, pencil that in with some of the local because they're not far only three and a half four hours away um from la and so of course you know uh all the local guys in california all those guys are included in this they need to really start waking up and recognizing that usc is is moving and grooving in another direction in, in a direction that we've never been you know we haven't been in this direction in a long time so you look at guys like this uh christian christian Thatcher, he actually came to visit, and he's a 6'2", 205 linebacker um, out of the Las Vegas, Nevada area. And, you know, he, he's a good player. And he's a, he's ready to four-star, number 34 linebacker in the country, number five player in the state of Nevada. Um, he's a top 300 player. He's sitting right at number 300. Um, you know, he needs to uh, – I know he's taking his time. I know he wants to get moving, groove. But USC is moving and grooving as well. And you look at this big boy – um, he has J uh, Josiah uh, Sharma. Sharma, uh, he's a three-star prospect, rated number 46 D lineman in the country, number 36 player in the state of California. 
he has nothing but Alabama stuff all on his matter of fact, he's dressed in an Alabama uniform and and he's a 2025 prospect out of Folsom, 6'5, 295. But he has nothing but an Alabama uniform all on his uh all on his uh his profile picture. And even Jackson Lloyd, he has an Alabama stuff on there. He's out of uh, Carmel, California, big time old tackle, six foot seven, two hundred and ninety pounds. Um, he's rated a four star, rated the number twenty one offensive tackle in the country, number eighteen player in the state of California. Um, wh where do we stand at with him? Um, that's the question. You know, are these guys recognizing what's taking place with USC? And we'll, we'll talk about what USC's approach should be and how we should look at this. And of course, you guys know Nashera Wyatt. 6'3 linebacker. Um, he's 2025 prospect as well. Uh, he's rated a four star, number 58 player nationally, number six edge in the country, and number four player in the state of California. Um, you know, where are we at with him and where is he at with us? I know, I think he's coming to, I'm trying to remember if he's coming to visit. Yeah, I think he's coming to visit. But my thing is this when we look at these guys, when we look at all of these guys, my thing is this because, I, you know, I noticed in the comment section, that the other day that there were still people, even though we got the best of the best in this 2025 class, when you look at the top 300, when you look at the top players in the state of Georgia, USC got, what, three of them, but just the top edge, he's a defensive end edge, um, Isaiah Gibson, and of course, um, Justice Terry, you look at these guys, these guys are the best at their position. So my question is this, um, should USC go after the best player, period? Or should they just limit it to stay limited to a California player? So that's a flip question. That's a two-fold question. Um, how do the players from California, how should they approach it? And how should they jump on board? And should they, I'm not even going to say drag their feet, but should they start recognizing that USC is a power player and that USC has master developers? And then on the flip side, uh, what, what, what should USC's position be? Here's my position. I think if you're recruiting, I think it happened with Pete Carroll. I think Pete Carroll went after the best players whether it was Jared or Dwayne Jarrett from New Jersey. I think Pete Carroll went after the best player, whether it was Brian Cushing from New Jersey. I think he went after the best player, whether it was Keith Rivers in the state of Florida, whether it was Nelson Aguilar in the state of Florida. I think Pete Carroll went after the best players everywhere. Um, you guys already know, even though Lofa Tatupa had big time players, uh, uh, um, even though he had players from um, uh, family from California, Lofa Tatupa, you know, he did go to high school in Maine. Um, you know, but U USC went after him. Of course, he went. Um, he was a transfer guy from the University of Maine. So, you know, my, my thing is, where, where should the approach be and, and, and what should USC do as it relates to um, targeting these guys? I think we should target these guys. But then I think the narrative has to change. And I think it's going to take people like me for putting that information out there to say, look, man, uh, if you're another guy like Dakota Fields, if you're another guy like Roger Pleasant, if you're another guy like Braylon Eland or Brandon Baker, listen, th those days are over. Th their narrative is gone. USC officially has a power play team, a, a, a big time team intact. And you guys got to start recognizing that, listen, this is not, you know, you got to give us the time of the day to really understand that, look, you are going to be developed here. You're going to be a big time player. You can succeed right here at home. So look, man, that's my that's my, uh, my my video for today, man. That's my thoughts for today, man. You guys can drop those comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. Where should USC, uh, what is USC, what should USC's approach be and what should uh, local guys uh, approach be as it relates to the narrative, the old narrative with the USC football program, man. So look, I'm out of here, man. Until later on, listen, everybody stay blessed. Don't forget, make sure you get up, get out. It makes some things happen. Until later on, fight on, fight on, fight on.